Good morning. Today is Sunday, January 30th. This is Faith at Home with Pastor. And uh, we're going to continue our study of 1 Corinthians. We looked the last couple weeks at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. uh, But today we're going to have 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is what we're going to be looking at. And so I want to begin with prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much. As we think about utilizing our gifts, gifts that you have given to us, help us to realize that the most important thing is all of it to be motivated out of love. Uh, love for you and love for one another. So, dear Lord, as we look at 1 Corinthians 13, that great love passage, help us to realize that we love because you first loved us. We pray all of, all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. That's interesting. As we look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you know, we looked at chapter 12 last couple of weeks, and it does talk about uh, spiritual gifts, uh, utilizing spiritual gifts. The very first uh, verse of of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, you know, it says, Following the way of love, eagerly, eagerly, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. So spiritual gifts kind of talked about in in chapter 14, uh, and then chapter 12, of course, certainly talks about that. But uh, sandwiched in between those two is a whole chapter uh, that St. Paul talks about regarding love. And so it's obviously obvious that uh, the, the, the spiritual gifts, as mentioned in chapter 12, and then uh, eagerly desire spiritual gifts, chapter 14, you know, it all has the idea that, that you, you do use your gifts motivated out of love. And if it's not motivated out of love, uh, it's not done for the common good. That's one of the things we looked at regarding spiritual gifts. It needs to be done for the common good. And, uh, and the way to do that is to have everything done out of love. And so, so 1 Corinthians uh, 13, let me, let me read, um, you know, the very last verse of, of 12 and then verse 13, uh, chapter 13. And yet I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy... In fact, can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and, and give over my body to hardship, that, it, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. You know, of course, uh, talking about love, uh, it's interesting, you know, we have one English word, love, but uh, in the Greek, they had many more words than that. And three in particular, I want to talk about, first of all, you have the word eros, uh, where you get the word erotic from that. So it's a more romantic kind of love. And then you have uh, phileo, Uh, Philadelphia comes from that, that Greek word phileo which means a brotherly kind of love. And then the love that is used in Scripture is agape, uh, which is a godly kind of love, the kind of love that, that God has for us. It's an unconditional kind of love. And so it goes on, and, and it talks about, uh, you know, uh, if I speak of men of angels but have not love, I'm a, a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. You know, and if I uh, do all these things, I can move mountains, you know, give all I possess to the poor, you know, do all these wonderful things, but if it's not motivated out of love, then it is for, for nothing. 
you know, why are you doing it? You're doing it for yourself. You feel good. Uh, but it's not based on love for God and certainly not love for others. And so then it goes on and says, uh, you know, what love is. And so I want to kind of go through some of those uh, things that are talked about. Uh, first of all, it says love is patient. You know, the, the Greek word that's used here describes patience with, with people, not patience with circumstances, uh, which is really a big difference. It's used of a man who is wronged and who has the power to avenge himself, yet will not do it. You know, of course, we can easily connect this with God and his relationship with us. You know, oh, how patient God is with us and how patient we ought to be with, with others. Certainly, God has the power to do something, but chooses not to. And I think that says a lot in our dealings with one another. You know, we may be able to avenge, uh, seek revenge on others, but are we, are we patient uh, with, with the people that, that we deal with? And so, like I said, it's not really talking about circumstances, more patience uh, with, with people. Love is patient. Love is kind. You know, this means that, that love is sweet to all. You know, so much Christianity is good, but, but not, not kind. You know, there was no more a religious a man than, than Philip II of Spain. You know, he founded uh, the Spanish Inquisition and thought he was serving God by n massacring those who thought differently from him. Now, bring this uh, to our present day. So many so-called good people have an attitude of, of, of criticism. We find it most enjoyable to criticize people uh, and, and difficult, even embarrassing for some, to, to praise people. You know, many good church people would have sided with the rulers and not with Jesus if they had to deal with the woman taken in adultery. But yet, love ought to, ought to be kind. You know, chief of sinners though I be, Jesus shed his blood for me. How kind he was to us. Should we not uh, be any less kind to, to others? So love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy. It has been said that there are really only two classes of people in, in the world, those who are millionaires and those who would like to be. <laughs> you know, there, there are two kinds of envy. One who covets the possessions of others and one who grudges the fact that someone has something that they don't have. It is not that they want it for themselves, but they wish that others did not have it. You know, meanness of soul can sink no further than that. So love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, love does not boast. You know, true love will always be far more impressed with its own unworthiness than its own merit. Uh, the true lover cannot get over the wonder that he is love. You know, love is kept humble by the consciousness that it can never offer its loved one a gift which is good enough. You know, how often we try to, to be good enough for God, uh, with God, yet, yet we fail. We are not good, but yet God loves us anyway. And because of that, uh, because of that, is there any reason for us not to love someone else? Is there anyone not worthy of our love? You know, we aren't deserving of love from God, but yet God loves us. And so, yeah, is there anyone less worthy than, than us? You know, I, I think not. So, yeah, love does not boast. Love is not proud. Love also is, is not rude. You know, this goes well with, with love not being proud. You know, many of us feel that we are deserving of something. If I go out driving in traffic or shopping at the mall, it is not long before it's easy to get very irritable. You know, people uh, drive around, shop in stores, do business with the attitude that the world centers around them. Look out for me, uh, number one. If we truly love God, love our neighbors, we are not proud. We don't think that we are better than others. And we are not proud, and also it's important for us not to be rude. You know, love does not insist upon its rights. You know, in the last analysis, there are in this world only two kinds of people, 
those who always insist upon their privileges, and those who always remember their responsibilities. You know, those who are always thinking of what life owes them, and those who never forget what they owe life. You know, it would be the key to almost all the problems which surround us today if, if people would just think less of their rights and more of their duties, of their resp- responsibilities. You know, whenever we start thinking about our rights, our place, you know, what we think we deserve, we really then are drifting away from, from Christian love. You know, it goes on, says, love is not easily angered. You know, Kipling once uh, said that it was the test of a person if he could keep his head when everyone else was losing theirs and blaming it on, on him. And if when he was hated, he did not give way to hating. You know, the man who is master of his temper can pretty much be master of anything. Of course, uh, in our text, we have many more characteristics. Love keeps no record of wrongs. You know, this is about the greatest form of love shown to us by God. Keeps no record of wrongs. We are forgiven. Our slate is wiped clean. Though we were crimson red due to our sinfulness, through Christ we have been made white as snow. How well do we show that type of love to our neighbor? It goes on, says, love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. You know, God in the person of Jesus Christ shows everyone, every one of these characteristics in abundance. God is love. God equals love. The definition of God is love. Love is not just another characteristic that some of us have and others don't. Love is the key to every one of the spiritual gifts that that were mentioned in the last couple weeks. You know, that's the kind of love that God has for us. So much so that he sent his son into this world in the form of a man, fulfilling the law in our place as man's substitute. Suffering the pain we deserve. Dying the death that is meant for us. Rising again so that we may have life, have everlasting life. We have all of this through faith. And if that was not enough, he sent his son, his, his Holy Spirit, to give us this faith so that we can believe in Jesus. He loves us so much. He sent his son. He loved us so much. He sent his spirit to give us faith to believe in his son. You know, First Corinthians 13 truly is the most beautiful chapter in the Bible. You know, you hear the chapter read at many weddings. And certainly, it's a wonderful kind of love a husband ought to have for, for his, his wife and his wife for her husband. But that's not the type of love, really, that's, that's talked about in 1 Corinthians 13. It's not just left for married couples. That's the type of love that, that God has for us and the type of love that we need to have for everyone, not just our spouse, not just those who, who uh, romantically we love, but but even brotherly love, all kinds of love. That's the kind of love we need to have, the agape kind of love, the the kind of love that God has for us. And so, really, rather than working, whether, you know, know, thinking about uh, the various commandments, certainly we need to think of the second commandment or the fourth commandment, the seventh commandment, the eighth commandment, you know, but in all of the commandments, think to ourselves, did I take advantage of the opportunities God gave me today to love my neighbor. And I think if we focus on love, that's how, why Jesus summarized the commandments. You know, all the commandments. Love God, love your neighbor. If we love God, if we love our neighbor, if we truly love God, if we truly love our neighbor, we don't need to worry about whether we've kept each one of the separate commandments. Because it will flow out of us. Because that's what love does. And so I certainly pray that God will guide and direct us so that we can show that kind of love to one another. I pray that God will strengthen our faith, uh, our hope, our trust. You know, at the very end of chapter 13, it says, faith, hope, and love remain, but the greatest of these is love. You know, faith and hope, certainly something that we look toward. Uh, but, uh, but once we get to heaven, you know, we really don't need faith and hope anymore because we've got what, what we are looking toward. 
Uh, but love is something that will last for all eternity. Uh, and that's the kind of love that we need to have here in this world. And so I kind of wanted to kind of share some of these words regarding 1 Corinthians 13 and just think about uh, the kind of love we have for God and our, our love for one another. So let, us, let me close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for that love you have shown to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we pray that you will in strengthen, strengthen the faith that is within us, that we can have that same kind of love in our dealings with others. Uh, guide us in that way, uh, and thank you for your love. We pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. And um, we kind of ended our discussion of 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 today. As we begin uh, February, next Sunday, uh, we're going to be uh, kind of going in a different direction, kind of still looking at the readings we have for, for the day, uh, but maybe use that as we uh, talk about other topics uh, regarding our, the, the lessons that we have assigned for each day. So, so anyway, I look forward to seeing you next week uh, at Faith at Home with Pastor.